Okay guys, I have no idea how I'm going to edit all of this together, but I'm going to somehow. So we are here starting a brand new series called Art Mixology, and this is more than just making homemade gesso. This is taking those bits and pieces apart, the different mediums, the glitters, the pigment powders, the paint. We're going to start mixing stuff together and we're going to see what happens. When something good happens, I'm going to create a recipe card for y'all so that you can download it and start your own recipe deck of art recipes and reproduce them. And um, today in this video, we are going to do melted metal paste and melted, and what was the other one? Uh, melted te uh, metal texture and I am going to show you right now how we do those I have some clips I'm going to show you my successes and my failures and uh, this video is probably going to be a little bit long I'll, I'll shorten it as much as I can but it'll be a little bit on the long side I'll be back at the end I'll show you what this is and let's get started hello everyone we are here today with what I hope will be a new series of sort of art experiments. I'm really all about using what we have, trying to use it in a new way this year, and buying less. Uh, I was kind of brainstorming with my friend Mike Deacon of Mike Deacon Art. I'll link his channel in the description below. And I was telling him about um, my idea going forward for 2018. And he coined the term art mixology. So this is art mixology episode one. And um, to go along with this, we're gonna have a series of recipe card style downloads um, where I'm gonna give you instructions on the mixes I'm gonna show you right now. And I, for myself, am going to put them into one of my Rolodex card holders with probably a sample of said uh, mix on the back, which I will share at the end of the video. So every episode will have two different ones in it. And for the first um, one, we're going to review one that I've done before, which I call melted metal paste. And for this, you're going to need some heavy gel medium gloss or extra heavy. The heavier the better. Um, you'll need some metallic paint, some kind of pigment powder. I have a number of different ones. This is one I want to use up called, the name of it, the color is Flash. And I don't remember, I think this might be one that my friend Cindy Utter gave me, but I don't remember what the brand is or anything. Any gold pigment powder will work. Even nail powder will work and a variety of gold, glitters, um, microbeads, flake, and different things to add into um, the mix. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little bit of the gel medium, and this is a brand new tub. Any brand, doesn't matter what brand it is. This is Amsterdam. And I'm just gonna do a little bit. On a, and this is a little um, porcelain plate from Daiso, the Japanese dollar store. A little bit of gold paint, about half as much as the um, gel medium. And then a little bit of the pigment powder. I think this might still be closed. So we have to open it. Sometimes getting it open is the hardest part. Okay, let me get it open. I'll be right back. That's a pain to get open. All right, so we just need a little bit of the powdered pigment. There's no exact measurements, but you just need a, a little tiny bit. Then we're gonna add in some glitter. Now for this first one, I'm going to keep everything that I add in, into here super fine um, and the glitters and powders will just add extra sparkle to it um, and make it look like melted metal. I don't want to put anything too chunky in it, at least on this first one. So I'm going to dump some gold glitter in there or goldish colored glitter and I'm going to put in a few micro beads. Okay. 
just a little bit. Oops. And then mix it all together. And you can tell already that you're getting something that's super sparkly, super thick and chunky. You can put this directly on your journal page or other artwork. What I like to do though is use it on a piece of deli paper and through a stencil. So I've grabbed a couple of my stencils. This is four square because there's four designs in a square. You get it? Um, four square number two. There's five different ones. And we are going to, I think, do this one here. So I'm going to just push it through. And then when it dries, it's going to be a bit dimensional because of the gel medium. It's going to be super sparkly and look like somebody melted a gold bar on your page or on your wherever you use this, your tag or whatever. Um, because of the gold paint and all the extra pigment powder and other sort of shiny gold things that you added in. To the paste yeah you do want to um, get this off of your stencil fairly quickly so it doesn't clog your stencil up by the way okay so we're going to turn this around so I don't get my hand in that and I'm going to take the what's re left of this gold powder and we are going to add some flake to it so these are just this is chunky chunkier pieces of glitter and then I have some of this uh, mica flake which actually isn't gold but um, do I have gold before I dump that in there? I might have gold, hold on. Or at least one that's closer. Mm. I don't have gold, but I have this one. Which, I don't know, it's more of a bronzy color. <clears throat> Let's use this one. We're just going to take a little pinch. Not too much. Use what you have. If you guys are like me, you've got all this stuff laying around in your art room. You're not doing much with it, so dig it out and let's use it. So we'll call this Melted Metal Fine and Melted Metal Chunky. I have another um, one of my four square stencils. This is number four. I think there's a piece of my hair in there. Yep. Now with the chunks in there, you're going to want to use a stencil that's bigger and more open because these fine lines, you probably wouldn't even see the chunks. They wouldn't make it through the stencil. I prefer to do these on deli paper and then have sort of a library of embellishments to add to my page or anywhere rather than do them directly into my journal. I find that more useful for me and my process. But you do what's right for you. I'm going to just try to scrape the rest of this off and use it all up. Go. Okay, so that's already not even dry and pretty, pretty, pretty. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to reset the table and put some things away, clean up the molding paste, I'm sorry, gel medium, and I'm going to set up for number two.
This is number one, and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, for this next one, I was kind of wondering what would happen if we dug out our old embossing supplies. <laughs> this is UTE. Those who don't know what that is, ultra thick embossing enamel. <laughs> it is, it's not, it's huge. Um, anyway. I haven't used it in a million years, and I was wondering what would happen if we mixed something like this, which is clear, with glitter, flake, um, um, flocking powder. I have this drawer of like nail, you know, glitters and things. What would happen if we mix some of these with the UTE? I say we find out. Um, so Let's just do this the easy way. We're going to just do this because we're just practicing, right? So I'm going to just do this and I'm going to get some UTE on there. I mean, sorry, embossing um, liquid on there. That works. Okay. Then we're going to take a the same little dish we used before and carefully, without spilling it, hopefully. There is a spoon buried in here. There we go. Grab just a little bit, we don't need too much. And let's mix it with one of some of the things that are on my desk. Let's put a little bit of, this is like little glitter circles. Again, these are nail or doing your fingernails. And let's put some of this. I have the same color in a mica flake. This is by Martha Stewart, I think, yeah. So let's mix those together. And it might do nothing, and this um, glitter may not stick. I have no idea what's going to happen. Let's see what happens. Oh. So if it's not stuck down, it's going to blow everywhere. That's what happens. So let's try something different. Let's do this. Okay, what had the embossing fluid from the stamp pad on it did stick down. Oh my gosh, I'm going to have glitter everywhere, you guys. Okay, so that's interesting. And once it dries, it doesn't come off. Okay, I have all this stuff everywhere now. Holy cow. This is why I don't do much with embossing powder. It goes everywhere. <laughs> all right, let's get another scrap of paper. And you know what, I do have um, an embossing pen down here, if it's not dried up. Let's see. No, it's not dried up. I don't 
know how well the UTE is going to stick to it, but let's find out. Oh, it did stick. These are like some mica flakes. And let's see. So you can use glycerin to emboss with, um, and that's what this is. You can get it at your local pharmacy. The melted metal I have done before, this I have not done before. You're seeing this new. I think that was a bit too much uh, glycerin. Okay, the embossing powder is really just not liking being mixed with other things that aren't embossing powder. That's the lesson there. So, then I have another idea. And this is inspired by Seth Apter and his new um, line of embossing powders and things, texture things. So why can't you take some of your embossing powders and mix them together? That's right, I said mix them together. Um, I also have some beeswax down here. I forgot was down there. All right, so let's actually clean this little piece of paper off. I'm going to have to clean my whole desk off because when I'm done with this, it's going to be a disaster. Um, let's use one of these embossing pens. our little dish and some more UTE and I've got these iced enamels this is relic powder and this one is raspberry I don't think I've ever used these I think I saw them at creativation um, back when it was still CHA or something and then I don't think I ever used them so let's use them, shall we? I am going to try adding a little bit of, this is flocking powder. So let's just add, let's see what happens if we add a little bit of that to it. Just a teeny bit. If I can get a teeny bit out. There we go. on. Move it around. Do it again. I 
one more time. Okay, and emboss. Okay, that worked like a charm. That's pretty cool. Those would be cool embellishments on a page. I like that, okay. So let's take, I have a couple more little pieces of this scrap paper, I wanna use them up. Um, let's go back to the big embossy embossing stamp pad and let's see if we can get a good, actually let's, you know what, let's um, add some more glycerin to it because I bet that's part of the problem. There's glitter everywhere now. <laughs> literally everywhere. Okay. So that's good and juicy now. Much better. Much better. All right, we're gonna take our little dish again with the UTE, which I like using because it's a clear base. So you're really just gonna see the things that you mix with it. I'm gonna take a little bit of this raspberry um, ice resin stuff. I don't remember exactly how you're supposed to use this stuff, to be really honest with you guys. Probably not how I'm using it. This beeswax has never been opened. Look at that. Okay, I'm gonna put a couple pieces of the beeswax directly onto our paper. Not too many, because I don't know what this is gonna do. We're gonna mix up our um, ice resin and our UTE. And let's put a little bit of that flocking powder in again. Let's see. see what happens. Okay, so I already filmed the ending to this video and I shut the camera off and then went, wait a minute, I've got two more pieces of paper. So we are going to call this melted metal paste, which was the first one. And then this one is melted metal texture. So these are the four successes. We did have two that I don't think turned out very well. I will include the clips for those. Um, this one was UTE, which is clear, and some of the iced enamels in relic powder. This was some of the UTE with the iced enamels in raspberry and then some beeswax. I really love this one. It does look like sort of old painted, rusty, gnarly, like yeah, I love it. This one is UTE with some metallic pigment powders. How cool is that? And this one is UTE with some chunky mica flakes, or I guess small kind of mica flakes. The trick I discovered after doing these two is to make sure your embossing stamp is really juicy and that you get a lot of embossing fluid, the sticky like glycerin on here before you pour your powder so that the glitter and the UTE stick really well. And that when you turn the heat gun on, it doesn't just blow all over the place. Um, but I think these are really fun and I think you need to experiment and try them and use them in your art. Okay, wasn't that a lot of fun? So this is one of my Rolodexes that I've done different art and things in. Um, I started it back in 2015. I never did finish it. I've done different experiments and things in it. I took 
one of the tab dividers and I created a new section called Art Mixology um, today. And behind that, I'm going to put the first of the two recipe cards, which is a free download, by the way. And I'm gonna put the link for the download in the description below. If you wanna ask me questions about the recipes or anything, leave a comment. I took and I printed out the file at 50% so that it would fit on my Rolodex card. And it is formatted to fit on a Rolodex card that way, um, but I printed it at 50% of its normal size. Then I took a couple of samples of the recipe and I stapled them to the back so I have reference samples. I did that for both of them. Right? There are a million possibilities for each one of these recipes of what you can do with them depending on what you have in your stash of stuff. I just took two, one of each basic kind. Um, so this is going to be a fun project, I think, going forward as I think of new things to just randomly mix together. We'll do more art mixology. If you like it, let me know. We'll keep going and uh, have some fun with it and do some experimenting on your own. And if you come up with something new, let me know. Uh, my Facebook group, A Life of Art and Self-Expression, is where we're going to do some talking and chattering and sharing about this. So if you'd like to join that Facebook group, the link's in the description below. If you want to support the free content here on YouTube, you can shop in my Etsy shop or you can um, put some money in my tip jar. Both of those links are also in the description below. Above all, though, go out and have a great day. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. Like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you later. Bye, guys. Thank you.